This video details Larsa's staged construction analysis engine, which has been leading the industry for over 25 years. Its unique features presented in this video, such as hinge cast and match cast displacement initialization options, determine how deformations affect the stepwise construction sequence associated with these more demanding structure types. One of the primary advantages of Larsa stage construction is that it rapidly incorporates multiple analyses types from live load to seismic within the very same run of analysis. This unique ability to utilize a single refined model for all analytical tasks has made Larsa a popular software with complex bridge leaders, providing the leading solution for segmental and long span cable crossings. For the design and analysis of concrete bridges, Larsa stage construction analysis couples time-dependent material effects with refined capabilities for geometric and material nonlinearity. Refined tendon modeling is also available in beam and shell elements, providing real-world accuracy for pre-stressed and post-tension bridges. In the analysis, short and long-term losses due to relaxation and superimposed loads are quickly considered. At its core, stage construction analysis models the changes to a structure over time with various construction activities. This form of nonlinear static analysis retains the state of the structure in a step-by-step -step manner, enabling engineers to efficiently study the life cycle of a bridge. Staged construction comes in standard and time-dependent formats in Larsa, which both perform the same nonlinear analysis. In the latter form, this is where our time-based material effects such as creep and shrinkage and post-tensioning losses are taken into account. Before incorporating stage construction into our models, the structure's geometry is first modeled without support conditions. Since the support conditions can change over time, these are specified later on within the construction sequence of the model. Concurrently, the model and sectional properties of the structure are entered into the program at this time. To consider time effects on materials, a design code is first selected before entering the relevant material parameters. Here we can see some of the more common design codes used in Larsa, including for Ashto, Eurocode, and more. After the desired geometry and properties are entered, the model is ready to be prepared for stage construction by defining various loading scenarios and by forming structure groups for the structural components that are going to be constructed or deconstructed. In Larsa, construction stages can be set up via explorers or spreadsheets, and our spreadsheets conveniently allow data transfer from Microsoft Excel. To introduce the methodology of how stage construction modeling is applied in Larsa, it's important to first understand the difference between steps and stages in Larsa 4D. Construction stages involve a series of construction steps, which represent the evolution of a structure's construction, demolition, or rehabilitation. As a stage represents one day of construction, it's appropriately labeled with a day number and can include a specific set of environmental properties, such as for temperature or humidity. These stages are parent containers to steps, which represent the finer grain of specific construction activities performed during a given day or stage. Now that we have an understanding of stage construction analysis, we can begin to review the different types of standard and unique construction activities that are offered by Larsa 4D. This begins with support activities, which are used to specify support conditions of the structure by changing the joint restraints in the model. 
These restraints can be modified or released at later stages by using the same type of activity. Alternatively, if a structure was modeled on grounded springs, instead of support activity, these springs can be activated through a construction activity that we'll soon discuss. Moving on, DOF constraints are present to add or remove equal displacement constraint behaviors between two degrees of freedom in the model. In stage construction, a DOF constraint activity can be used if the connection between superstructure and substructure is not explicitly modeled. They are also helpful when modeling non-composite action between superstructure units simply by coupling them for the vertical translation. To assemble or remove parts of the structure that are defined by the structure groups, construction and deconstruction activities are used. As we can see, Previously defined structure groups of the model play an important role in this setup. In the analysis, only the elements that are explicitly constructed contribute to the stiffness, while unconstructed elements are ignored. By default, elements are constructed by their self-weight and stiffness at the same time. However, in LARSA, we can also activate them in different steps. When performing time-dependent analysis, if the casting day is not already provided in the element inputs, a cast concrete activity can be involved in the stages before the construction of the element. Lars's analysis engine will use this information to determine the age of a concrete component. If a concrete component also has pre-stressing, Separate tendon stressing or slackening activities are included within the model stages. These activities refer to applying or removing the effect of pre- and post-tensioning tendons in the model, where the tendon can be included in either beam elements or in shell elements. Lars's tendon modeling technique is known as equivalent load through discretization of tendon force where the tendon force is discretized along its length to account for the short-term effects of friction and seeding of the tendon at stressing. This method has the advantage of implicitly accounting for the change in geometry of non-prismatic sections. As part of time-dependent analysis, long-term losses in pre-stressing due to relaxation, creep, shrinkage, and elastic shortening can also be considered. Load activities apply or remove loading by using the load cases that are available in the model. They can range from a basic self-weight loading for automatic computation to a pre-tension or post-tension load for adjusting cable structures. The effect of a load activity at one stage remains on the structure in all subsequent stages unless the load is removed by applying an equal and opposite loading factor. When applying temporary loads, such as wind load, the default construction attributes of the associated step are changed so that the analysis engine will automatically remove loads prior to the next step. Analysis scenarios are analyses performed during a stage construction analysis. Going back to the construction attributes of a step, there's a list of analysis types available to perform at any point during the construction sequence. Here we see the examples of an influence-based live load analysis and eigenvalue analysis, both being performed simultaneously on the deformed and stressed state of the bridge. In another example, we see pushover analysis of a concrete pier within the construction stages. For this type of analysis, the geometric nonlinearity option is turned on in LARSA. In staged construction analysis, joints are normally constructed at their undeformed position. 
However, when modeling the erection sequence of an arched structure or a balanced cantilever bridge, this would be undesirable because the adjacent elements in the structure have already deformed in previous construction steps. To match the deformation of adjacent joints, Lars's specialized methods for segmental construction automatically adjust the coordinates of joints just prior to their construction. The hinge cast method adjusts joint coordinates by taking the translational displacements of adjacent elements as a reference. Alternatively, the match cast method makes sure that the newly constructed elements have a matched interface with the adjacent part of the structure. It's also worth noting that segmental construction methods can also be used when constructing deck surface meshes. The last activity that we'll review is hoist for incremental launching. This activity applies displacement to the joint with the magnitude equal and opposite to the total displacement of the joint in the specified direction, and then restrains the joint in that direction. In other words, this activity can be used to simulate lifting and supporting of the launching nose. We hope you found this video helpful, and we welcome you to contact us if we can provide further information or assist your project needs.